Forget about it. Will and I had been, had been and are friends for many, many years, and we had uh, been developing some feature stuff, feature film stuff together, live action. And I called Will up, and I, I, we were collaborating on a lot of things, and I said, let's come up with an animated show together, as if it's so easy. I'd gone off and come up with various concepts for a show, and I remember one that I pitched to Nicholas was uh, about a guy who runs a small hotel. And it would be about this guy and all the weird people that live in his hotel. And we and I said, and what one thing we could do, because The Sopranos was on at the time, is we'll occasionally show them watching TV and we could have a parody of The Sopranos. Nicholas said, well, that's our show. And I said, oh yeah. And I went off and, and came up with some more ideas and brought it back to Nicholas. And then we brainstormed and came up with Forget About It. We wrote a five minute Forget About It and we recorded it and we animated it. Yeah, yeah, I know. It ain't like that anymore. We shot that to Teletoon, and there was a lot of interest there. So I contacted uh, Vince Camiso at Nine Stories, and I called him up and I said, I got the show, forget about it. And he said, yeah, I remember the show, it's a great show. I said, let's do it together. And he said, sure. And then I remember getting a call, or on a conference call with Vince. He said, you know, the pilot we did is good, but we think it can be better. Do you mind if I bring in somebody to do a revision on the pilot. When Vince Camiso first contacted me, sent me the first pilot, and I just saw something here, and the fact that animation was brand new, and I was looking to do something new and different, to do something this different and this exciting was just wonderful. And I, I said, of course, I don't mind, and then I, I hung up and angrily trashed my office. <laughs> <laughs> And a few months later, um, Vince sent us the Jeff's version of the pilot. And, you know, of course, as the original writer, you kind of read it with, with dread. And I just found myself laughing harder and harder. It just made me laugh. I, I emailed Vince and said, this is great. Let's go for it. Forget About It is a show at its heart about a family, albeit a very dysfunctional family. But I've honestly yet to meet a family that wasn't dysfunctional the fish out of water aspect, the differences between Canada and the United States, uh, which is why we have seven Canadians living in LA, stuck in a room writing about those differences. It's funny, I have never stated the premise of the show that it didn't get a laugh. And it's been very simple. Uh, a mob family from New Jersey or New York relocates to Regina, Saskatchewan. It always gets a laugh, and which makes it that much more fun to write. I mean, it's just, from the get-go, it's a very funny premise. I would say the biggest challenge is, and it's, a, it's an enjoyable challenge to try to tackle, is the inherent premise of the show, which is that this family's in witness protection, and therefore there are certain rules that apply. You know, they can't get too famous. They can't travel easily. You know, they're, they can't see their family. So when you introduce a new character, if someone ever finds out their real identity, what do you do with that character? Kill them. Who's yeah, them? so, so we, we're, we are murdering a lot of people. <laughs> um, Going back to one of the things that's fun about animation is, you know, after 20 plus years of developing these rules of storytelling, I get to throw them all out the window. The biggest highlight for me so far was uh, seeing the, the Leica of the first episode. And for the audience that doesn't know that term, a Leica is like a moving storyboard, rough animation of the episode. And I think seeing the jokes come to life with little moving characters was, was very gratifying. Typically, uh, animation begins with a script. Once the script is done, we go into a record studio and record all the various characters telling the story. From there, we hire storyboard artists who then create still images per the script. And from the script, we go into a Leica, which is the still images blocked out to time with the audio. So we have an idea of what the project is going to look like. Any up, boys. It's my deal. The beauty of the animation process, though, is that you have the luxury to, uh, at various stages, see how things are working, and go back and 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 punch up jokes or or fix a whole scene. Whereas uh, I've never worked in like the multicam live action that these guys have, but I feel like you don't get that luxury. You know, you're you have you tape every Friday, and that that's it. Once you tape it, it's taped. The characters can, are who they are, and, but beyond that, there's no 
depth to how stupid they could be, no limit to how brilliant they could be. Gravity doesn't necessarily pertain. The laws of physics don't matter. My favorite, I'd have to say Jimmy Falcone. He's Tony Soprano with way more heart and maybe a lot less brains. My favorite character is Cheech. For me, it's Uncle Cheech just because he's fun to write. He, he, you can pretty much get away with anything with Cheech. And uh, he's a dumb guy. I've always written dumb guys very well. I don't know why. <laughs> I like Cookie. She's the uh, strong, brassy, brash wife and mother. I know everyone's expecting me to say Petey. <laughs> <laughs> He's no uh, For me, I think there's a, there's a couple of characters right now. Right now, it's Jimmy, Cheech, and I would include Petey as being the strongest, but Gina is somebody that uh, we have room to explore. They're all my favorite. I love all the characters. Um, I, I think Uncle Cheech is great because he's a character you can always go completely random on. Which is weird too because Will has four kids but he has favorites. He points that out all the time. <laughs> An important part to animation is basically having character voices. And this season for Forget About It, we were so lucky to have somebody like Jason Jones playing Al Capone. Andrea Martin playing the Virgin Mary. Both did a fantastic job and brought such life and character to our show. It's not that big a deal. Stop bowing. I'm trying to have a conversation here. You got a light? I, I can't believe it. Yeah, I know it's bad for me. I'm trying to cut down. I tried the patch. That works for sh**. I once shot my boss's dog. I had to. I shot my boss and the pooch shot a whole thing. Now, come on. Tell your Uncle Al what you did. This is my first animated job ever. I was clearly not good enough. And I have auditioned for many, <laughs> many animated shows and never booked a single one. Uh, but this is my first. Al Capone's voice for me was very, uh, very easy to come by because th I think there's three impressions in life that almost everyone can do. Jack Nicholson, everyone can do a bad Jack Nicholson. Uh, Yoda, everyone can do a Yoda. And an Edward G. Robinson. So I did a Yoda. I hope you like it. If I can just give you a sampling, um, sound a little something like this. Al Capone, I am. I'm running rum here, she? Um, it, it's a really fun show. Um, my hope for it is that people have as much fun watching it as we have making it. I've been very fortunate to work on FAI. It was an incredible show. We've had so much fun. It is hilarious. Yeah, for me, I, just for the show to find an audience and for us to keep being able to make the show. Everyone I know loves mob movies. Everybody loves The Godfather and Goodfellas. And there's just a lot of comedy in that kind of a setting. It's a great show. Yeah. It's very, very funny. It's an awesome writing team. This guy's brilliant. And uh, you should all watch it. This guy's brilliant too, by the way. Yeah. La 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 la